now to an inspiring story about one of last year's MacArthur Grant winners and how design can change lives. Special correspondent Jackie Judd reports for our breakthrough series on in innovation and invention. In the hands of Alex Truesdell, a simple piece of cardboard turns into a world of possibilities. Her life's mission began by accident. Truesdell was rooting around in a closet at a school where she was teaching and found a chair that had been made for a disabled adult. The armrest and the footrest on it were actually at different heights on the left side than the right side. And I asked about it and they said, oh, that's made of cardboard. And I think my head exploded. Why did your head explode? The idea that you could take that material and turn it into what you needed. That if you needed something, you could make something. Truesdell has been making something ever since with her triple ply cardboard, glue, and simple tools. In New York City at the Adaptive Design Association, which she founded, cardboard furniture and learning tools are built for children with disabilities. It makes the child one believe in their own capacity and that everyone who knows and loves the child believe in what they're able to do. <laughs> I think it upends the prognosis because so often, unfortunately, the word disability signals broken, can't, isn't. Creating this very individualized furniture often involves a house call. Check out that chair, Austin. Whoa. In suburban New Jersey, 21-month-old Austin Kellenberger is getting his first fitting for a chair and a table. Austin has uh, significant motor development issues. He uh, has difficulty even moving his arm. Today, even as a toddler, Dad John Kellenberger says Austin feels apart from his twin brother and older sister. Oftentimes, my other son Dylan and my daughter Savannah will be playing um, at the table with toys. He's not able to do that. Um, so he, you do see he is very frustrated. He wants to, he's a very social boy. He wants to be part of the group. The furniture is supposed to make that possible, to make Austin feel less different and to build his physical strength. Right now he fatigues quickly, but he hasn't had the right chair in order to build strength. Mm -hmm. So the angles of this will, will actually give him a bit of a challenge. Cardboard is relatively inexpensive, readily available, and really sturdy, a trifecta for growing kids and for families often burdened by medical costs who are asked for contributions of just $500. So be inch and a half. Austin's chair is measured and measured again and cut to within an eighth of an inch, so it is just exactly right for the little boy. We, you need a custom fit in an off-the-rack world. And if it doesn't fit, if the child struggles and they're already struggling, it's going to use up the, that energy and be discouraging. And then they or someone else will give up and get the wrong idea about the child's potential as opposed to uh, being inspired enough to change the thing, change the environment to make it work. Truesdale saw that happen in her own family, and it was a life changer. Her uncle turned conventional household tools into something her aunt, who had lost the use of her hands, could manipulate. My uncle was able to repurpose things, bend things that were too straight, cut things that were too long, connect things, and that thought that you could engineer change to suit her specific needs is really the root of this. The workshop has turned out pieces this year for more than 200 New York area kids, but many more children can use them. So Alex Truesdell and her team spend as much time teaching as they do designing and building. In the last several years alone, they've led several hundred design workshops and have answered inquiries from around the globe. As a result, these cardboard creations are being built in about six U.S. locations and in countries as diverse as India, Romania, and Peru. We try to use methods here that could be used anywhere in the world. So any technique, anything we make, the materials we use, we want other people to see what we do and copy it. We really are trying to cause a movement so that we would inspire imitation, cooperation, you know, collaboration throughout. Truesdale sees some children only once and others throughout their lives. She met New York City teenager Hannah Auchincloss as a toddler when Hannah's mother, Tracy Ehrlich, was struggling to find a chair 
in which Hannah could feed sitting up. She couldn't do any of those things, and she was much too small for conventional wheelchairs. So there was nothing you could have ordered online or gone into a medical supply store and say, that's what I need, that's what would help her? No, absolutely not, because she was so young. Ehrlich has lost track of all the pieces Truesdale has made for <laughs> Hannah, and even some for her sisters, so the family feels bound together instead of separated by Hannah's challenges. But some pieces stand out, like the bike, the scooter, and a beloved rocking chair that Hannah can get moving on her own. The experience of moving herself it's a, a one thing she can really control every day. I think that all of the different pieces of equipment have opened up the possibilities for her, the opportunities for her to interact with her world, to interact with the people who are around her. In New Jersey, Austin Kellenberger is just beginning to interact with his world. His furniture has been delivered, and what most see as a simple chair, his parents, John and Danielle, see as transformative. I want Austin to reach whatever the potential that he has, I want him to reach that. I don't know what that is, the doctors don't know what that is at this point, but whatever it is, I want to give him every chance to meet that. And this is one of the, <laughs> frankly, this is one of the things that's helping us do that. Alex Truesdale started out as a teacher for the blind. What she has done is let children, thousands of them, see and experience movement, growth and confidence all through a simple piece of cardboard and a lot of ingenuity. This is Jackie Judd in New York for the NewsHour.